Have you ever wanted to play with N810 but always was put off because of the price of N810 subscription? Then don't worry, we are going to show you how to get N810 for free. Just follow along and then you would have your own instant to play around to experiment with N810. Alright, we start with going to our website nwking.org forward slash plus. When you do that, it takes you to our website. On the left, under discussion, there should be a link called artificial intelligence. If you click on that, it should open up. If you're not registered or join the uh, group, just click on join on the right and it will add you to the group, right? Now, if you click on downloads, that will show you all download links available for you. So if you go to N8N's um, free GCP uh, link, you could click on that link and that opens up this PDF. And this PDF is a great resource. It shows you a lot of uh, benefits and talks about uh, N8N. But one thing that I want you to look at is this screen. And there is a cloud free tire. You can click on that and that gives you more information about uh, Google's free tire. And as long as you stay within those limits, you are not going to be charged. And the limits are, you, it needs to be an E2 micro. It needs to be in one of these three zones, up to 3 GB of standard persistent disk and 1 GB of uh, traffic. And then if you go down, it shows you uh, virtual, I mean, different steps and how to set up the uh, cloud instance. Uh, then it shows you how to uh, connect your uh, domain and then it shows you how to set up. So let's start with console.google.cloud.google.com, uh, uh, console which is the Google Cloud Services uh, homepage. Uh, log in with your username and password. A Gmail works. So if you have a Gmail account, you can log in there. That should take you to this page. On here, um, the first thing that we will start is we'll create a new project. So on the left, you have this project. If you don't have anything, you may not have. But if you, uh, if you click there, it will give you an option to create a new project. And once you click on that screen, you can name your project. So let's say we name this project N18 YouTube video and click hit on that create button. Uh, give it a few seconds on the top right hand corner under notification. It would tell you that a new project has been created. You can click on that select project button, which will select the project. And you can confirm that by looking on the top left, which says N18 YouTube video or whatever the new project you name, that will be the one that is chosen there. Now, once that's done, let's go to compute engine API. This is the first thing that we need to enable. So if you click on compute engine API, that pops up, click on that, and that takes you to this screen. Now on there, hit that enable button. So when you click on that enable button, if it's your first time, of course, it will ask you to create a billing account because with, without billing account, they won't let you do that. So you can click on that enable billing button and go through the process. You will have to give your uh, country information, your address, billing information, uh, and, and also it would ask you for a credit card information. Now, credit card is mandatory, so you will have to put a credit card uh, or a debit card. Uh, once you put the, one of the visas or MasterCards there, um, it would take that information, create your billing account. But if you follow the instructions in this video, you will not be charged a dime, right? And nothing, I mean, every, every month Google will issue you a zero dollar invoice. So you, you, you can be sure uh, you are not going to be charged as long as you stay within that free limit. So I would recommend you go and read that free limit instruction again. Click on that link on our PDF and go to the Google's uh, free tire uh, information and it will give you more information what the free tire entitled. So as long as you stay within that free tire, you should be good. So once you have that, hit on that free uh, start free button. That should take you back to the cloud uh, computer engine API. On the screen, click on enable again if it's not already enabled. When you click on that, now since you already have a billing account, it is going to enable cloud uh, a compute engine API. Once that's done, the next thing we need is compute engine. So search for compute engine and click on the compute engine product page. Once you do that, it takes you to the compute engine page. Click on that create instance button. 
First thing, you need to give a name for your cloud instance. So let's call it whatever you want, and I'm going to call it N8N YouTube. Uh, um, and then, uh, because if you remember from, from the free tire, I said you have to choose one of the three regions. So I'm going to choose US West. Uh, the type is going to be EC, uh, E2, E2, and under E2 by default, it's medium. We're going to change it to micro because that's the free tire. Uh, once that's done, um, we are pretty much uh, done and it will show you have to pay uh, uh, approximately $7.11. Uh, but don't worry, whatever uh, the amount, because you're part of the free tire every month, Google is going to give you that much credit and uh, issue you a $0 invoice, right? So don't worry, uh, you are going to be good. So once that's on the left, you have OS and storage. Click on change, right? So let's choose an operating system. Let's choose Ubuntu. Uh, and under Ubuntu, let's choose the long-term uh, LTS version, which is the long-term version. And under, uh, so the LTS um, you know, 2404 is the long-term. And let's choose the x86 variant because this cloud instance is an x86 platform. Uh, uh, choose boot disk as standard persistent. And we can take up to 30 GB because that's all part of the free tire. So once that's done, the snapshot schedule says default schedule, and that's something that's going to charge us money because that's we don't have a snapshot that is on the free tire. So by default, the snapshot default snap uh, scheduler is added. We will go ahead and remove that later. But let's continue uh, building the instance. So next, you click on networking and allow HTTP, HTTPS traffic and load balance health checks. So once you enable all three, the, the amount changes. But like I said, don't worry. Every month, uh, Google is going to give you a credit to uh, remove that. So click on the button to create uh, the instance. And once uh, that's done, it will take a few uh, seconds. Uh, could be up to a minute too, depending on, on, the, on the load on the servers. And then uh, it would uh, say the status would come up with check. So if you click on that, that will take you uh, give you more information. So let's the way we remove the snapshot is we scroll down to storage. Under data protection, it says default schedule. So let's click on that instance again. It opens up the manage disk part and click on edit. Scroll down to snapshot schedule. Say no schedule and that will remove the uh, st uh, storage snapshot schedule and click on save and that should save the new instance. There's one more thing you might have to do because if um, by the time you did this, if there is already a snapshot that is created because it's an auto snapshot, uh, that snapshot will still keep charging you money. Uh, it, it may not be much. I mean, when I did this the first time, I disabled the um, snapshot schedule. But by that time, they had already created a snapshot. And every month I was getting a bill for $0.1. And I was like, it's supposed to be free. And then I realized there is already a snapshot, even though schedule was canceled. But there was one which had already been created. So it's better to go through all these uh, tabs here. If there is anything, just delete it off and delete the snaps, uh, snapshot schedule. Once that's done, uh, you are good to go. I think we are good. Let's go to VM instance again. And here you note there is external IP and that IP is important. So next, let's go to your DNS provider. In my case, it's going to be Cloudflare because I, I manage all my uh, domains um, yeah, from Cloudflare. But if you already have an existing domain, I'm sure the domain provider uh, already has a DNS manager. So you can go to your DNS manager there. Or if you choose to create a new, uh, buy a new domain, please free to buy a new domain. But we could also use an existing domain. So if you have an existing domain, what we could do is uh, go to the DNS zone editor. And what we'll do is we'll create a subdomain, right? So the way you do that is you add a record, uh, add a a record so a record and give a name that is going to be your subdomain so n8 in uh, imranrafai.com that's my uh, subdomain because my imranrafai.com domain is what we are controlling now and then uh, and under ip address you put the external ip that we got from the vm instance right so put that external ip there and don't proxy i don't know if all if, if you don't have proxy in your uh, service don't worry about that all you do is put the IP address, put your subdomain, hit enter, that will become, right? In some cases, it could take a lot longer for you to, for the DNS to propagate up 24 hours. In Cloudflare, it's almost instant because my domain is already connected. But if you go to that n18.inranrafi.com now, 
it is obviously not going to show anything because there is nothing to show because we haven't configured. It's just an empty VMware. So the way you add uh, or set up your VM is if you go back to Cloudflare and click on SSH and enable uh, uh, authorize SSH to get into an SSH in browser. And once you get in the SSH browser, you are dropped at that uh, blank screen. Now let's go back to our PDF and um, uh, we've done pretty much all this already. So let's go down to uh, option. Like I said, there are two ways to set up the uh, uh, container, anything container. Uh, one is, of course, there is a script that I've built. You can use that script. Or the other way is to manually done, right? I don't normally recommend using script because if, you, if you're not uh, sure and if you don't trust the script, a script could literally done malicious code, right? So unless you're very, very sure, never run scripts from the internet. But in my case, because I built, this is uh, a script I built and it's on one of my other servers, I am going to use that, uh, answer two questions, and that's pretty much it. The script is going to build the entire uh, platform and infrastructure, including uh, building containers, downloading relevant files, so we copy that uh, uh, link, uh, which is going to download the script. So that's the first step. Step two, and then you can follow this PDF. Uh, you can go to our website, get this PDF, and it has instructions. You can follow that. Uh, make that script into executable form, and let us go ahead and execute that script uh, with the third command there. And that will execute the script. Once that's done, it is going to, of course, come up with this banner screen. And it's going to ask you two questions, like I said. It's first, it's going to ask an email address, an email address for the SSL certificate. So you could give your email address. Uh, and uh, the next question it's going to ask is your domain or your subdomain, right? In our case, it's a subdomain that we created. That is n18.imranrafai.com. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to answer that question there, n18.imranrafai.com. Uh, hit enter, right? When I hit enter here, uh, after answering these two questions, it's going to, of course, reconfirm that if the configuration that I entered is correct. And if you think this is right, just hit Y, hit enter, and the script is going to do all the work for us. While the script is doing what it has to do, let us talk about how we are actually setting up this VPS. Uh, the architecture is pretty simple uh, and straightforward but it is designed to be flexible for future experimentation. We are going to be running two Docker containers on this VPS. The first container is running Nginx with Acme Companion. This is essentially going to be our traffic manager and SSL handler. The second container is obviously going to be an 10 Now here's how the traffic flow works. When someone visits n18.imranrafai.com, uh, the request first hits our um, Nginx container and, and, and then uh, the Acme container takes over and issues a new SSL. Nginx then routes the traffic to the N18 container. Now you might be wondering uh, why are we setting it up this way? Well, the beauty of this architecture is scalability and flexibility. Let's say down the line you want to experiment with a new technology or a new platform. All you have to do is set up a new Docker container on this uh, VPS. Now, once you set up a new uh, Docker container and maybe route a new uh, domain, uh, let's call it um, uh, flowwise.inranrafi.com, uh, when that traffic comes to engines, it sees, okay, flowwise.inranrafi.com is a new domain. It sets up an SSL certificate. And if you have configured the Docker container correctly, it will route the traffic to the Docker container. You don't have to manually do any um, SSL management because Nginx is going to do everything here. Now, one important thing to note here is since we're doing the free tire EC, uh, E2 micro, it may not have enough resources to run multiple containers at the same time. So I recommend that you uh, shut down N18 before you install or uh, uh, spin up a new uh, Docker container for the new platform. The script is currently doing pretty much everything. It is, uh, of course, uh, updating the operating system. It is installing Docker and Docker Compose. And it is also building these two containers that we spoke about. So let's wait for it to finish. All right, once the script is run, you would get this final confirmation screen saying uh, setup completed successfully. And when you know that 
when you see that, you know everything has run. So let's go back to the PDF. And if you see, we did step four, and now step five says skip to part B. If you skip to part D, it says, now we need to um, set up. So before we do that, first we need to confirm if all the Docker containers are running, right? The way that we do that is sudo docker ps, that's a command. So if you go back to the terminal, sudo docker ps, hit enter, that should give you confirmation that three containers are running. And if you look at the status, two of those containers, that is the engines and the uh, Acme companion containers, that would have launched at least 15 minutes before the last one. And that's the way this uh, uh, script is set up. And the last container says it's about a minute. So if you look at this thing, it says you might have to uh, wait a few minutes. So let's say if you go to that domain, it may not be ready yet. So it takes a few minutes for the NH. So when traffic is coming, now if you see the NH and container was just installed and just launched. So now when the traffic starts start coming, that's when uh, the uh, uh, companion, um, uh, engine's uh, companion, SSL companion, or let's say encrypt companion, realizes that it needs to issue. So if I hit enter, it would say find out to bad gateway. So don't worry about it. Uh, like I said, you have to wait some time, right? Could be five minutes after this script says it's confirmed. So just try once. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, work at least it's, it, it may initiate uh, SSL issuance if it is not already done. Uh, so wait for a few minutes. You can try uh, again uh, Docker PS and says the, that Docker container has been up for about two minutes. Uh, ideally, I would say wait for about five minutes and try and it's going to work. All right, so then what happens is when uh, the setup is complete, um, when you go back to n18.imrandrafi.com or whatever your domain is, you would get slash setup and that shows uh, or confirms that N18 has been successfully installed on your cloud instance, right? So set up the account, it asks for email address, give your email address, uh, give your first name, last name, and set up password for yourself, right? So uh, once you set a password, of course, you can skip uh, clicking on I want to receive security product. Next screen is not mandatory. So it asks you about what your company size and roles. You could just say get started because none of them is mandatory requirement there. Click on get started. On this screen, it says you could get paid features for free, right? N18 is open source, but it's always good to get a license from N18 and then they're going to unlock it, uh, uh, the, the, the platform so you can have unlimited uh, workflows. So once you click on that, it should send you an email. So if you go back to your email, you would have your license key. Uh, copy the license key, come back to um, your N18 instance and click on the usage in plans. In case that pop-up is not available, there is an easy way for you to get that is go to settings uh, and click on your name on the bottom left, click on settings and there is that usage and plan left. Click on that. That takes you to the same screen. Now, once you get the license key, click on enter activation key. Enter the key that you got by email, click on activate. That activates your license. So it says license activated or you get the registered uh, label. Once that's done, you're pretty much done and you have a working instance of N18. This is a full-fledged N18 uh, uh, version running on your own server for free and you don't have to pay any money to do your automation. So this is great. I hope you're going to use this and learn automation. So thank you for now and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.